Hey everyone, this is Lou from Lightpoint Scientific and I'm going to just show you real quickly how we get uh, vehicle speeds from surveillance video. There's going to be a much more in-depth tutorial coming from Ben Molnar that will detail uh, the, the real specifics of the process um, in a much longer tutorial. But I just want to get everybody acquainted with uh, the process and those that know photogrammetry well already will probably be able to make use of the uh, techniques that I'm going to show you right now. Those that aren't super familiar with photogrammetry are going to need to either uh, refer to Ben's entire tutorial or uh, about annually, every year, or maybe twice a year or so, I offer an advanced photogrammetry uh, course for collision reconstruction and we go over the process in there as well. So uh, this is a, a video of a vehicle. Uh, there's going to be a blue sedan coming through the screen and the goal here is to determine the speed of the vehicle as it goes through, uh, the, through the screen. So here the vehicle speed was relatively consistent. This is just a test run that we did. We had a, a V-Box Sport on the sedan as it was going through so we know its actual speed uh, and we're just going to do a photogrammetry analysis to figure out what the speed is uh, using Photomodeler uh, and Cloud Compare as well. Okay, so uh, the first step is to export the frames uh, that you're interested in. So depending on how in-depth the analysis needs to be, how much uh, money is available for your analysis, you could export you know, every frame, every fifth frame, every tenth frame, depending on how uh, quickly the vehicle's speed is changing. So in a situation like this where the vehicle appears to be uh, going through pretty consistently, you might just export uh, five frames and analyze those and look at the speed trace throughout. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to uh, export two and take a look at it. So one of the key things, of course, when you're doing a video analysis is not just the photogrammetry. It is uh, understanding when those uh, frames were written uh, and especially with respect to each other and uh, how healthy they are. So that's a different uh, thing that I'm not going to talk about right now. I'm just going to talk about the, the photogrammetry side of it. Okay, so once you've exported your frames, you're going to bring those into Photomodeler. Um, and you're also going to import the uh, a point cloud. So this relies, this method relies on you going out to the collision site and uh, firing off some laser scans and then bringing that scan data into Photomodeler uh, and then selecting control points. So that's what all these little uh, gray spots are here. These are control points from the site scan data and we're just placing uh, the, we're basically telling photo, uh, photo modeler what the 3D coordinates of this dashed line are and of this uh, little feature in the building, what those 3D coordinates are. And when you select about five of those or so, it's going to uh, calculate the camera's location and the camera's focal length. And then as you select more points, uh, once you start getting over 10 and if they're spread out pretty well across the frame, then you can also calculate what the distortion of the camera is, uh, which is really useful for improving accuracy. Um, at that point, once you have those control points selected, you can fade the point cloud in and out, which is one of the real benefits of having Photomodeler Premium. Uh, you can fade the point cloud in and out and analyze that fit and it just gives you extra confidence so that you can uh, feel good knowing that you have a good solution and, and the mathematics um, kind of under the hood are, are going to be sound. Uh, on top of that, I really like to be able to do uh, the, the point cloud fade in and fade out because it makes a great exhibit to show the jury. So they kind of understand what the photogrammetry analysis is without you having to talk uh, real specifics about computational photogrammetry analysis and, and how it's performed. Uh, it's always something that I try to avoid when I'm on the stand. Uh, I'd, I'd rather give them some sort of uh, visual. So uh, here we have the point cloud from, from the site inspection over on the imports and coordinates pane. And then I'm just going to go on to the visibility and turn on point clouds uh, right here. That's on now. Um, and you can see right away it, it brings it in. Uh, the point cloud is now overlaying on top of that frame. Here we're looking at frame 421. Uh, I recommend naming those frames in a manner that, that keeps you organized. Um, so now I'm going to go from clear and I'm just going to slowly make that opaque. Just so you can start to analyze the fit um, and kind of ensure that everything's aligning properly. The, the distortion is calculated for or accounted for uh, and that the camera location and everything seems to be um, spot on. So like I said, that, that helps you figure that out, but also you can make an animation pretty easily um, in some sort of video analysis program or just export each one of these step by step and compile them 
to just show the jury like, hey, here's the uh, frame that we have from the surveillance video. The car is visible in there. We went out, we did a site inspection with this fancy scanner. We're now gonna fade in the uh, measurements that we got when we're at that site inspection, uh, just to know that we're in the right location. Uh, everything's lined up well, and now we can essentially start tracing measurements on top of that. Uh, so here I'm gonna turn off that uh, background point cloud and start focusing on, on the, the car itself. So uh, we're gonna do a very similar process, a reverse projection, but we're gonna be using a 3D point cloud to figure out the location of uh, this blue sedan. So to do that, we go into, point, uh, into cloud compare and we bring in the site point cloud, uh, which you can see here, of course, and then we also bring in an exemplar point cloud of the vehicle of interest. So in this situation, the uh, camera was here uh, in this part, portion of the parking lot. And what we do at this point is just grab the exemplar point cloud and we take a first crack as far as where we think it probably was in that frame. Um, you wanna make sure that it's aligned on the roadway. Here, I'm just setting my rotation point um, to make this a little bit easier. You wanna make sure that it's on the roadway uh, in the lane position that you think is appropriate. Uh, and then you could just grab this and move it around to wherever you think that is and then export it from here. Uh, we're using a really highly subsampled point cloud for this portion of the analysis just to uh, expedite the iterations and make it really uh, easy to, to move in between programs because this can be a little bit of a tedious process. So once you have a good understanding of where that point cloud should be, um, you've taken your first crack at it, you'll export uh, from uh, Cloud Compare, and to do that, you just click on the cloud, hit File Save, and then save it as a PTS. And Photo Modeler is really good about bringing in all different types of uh, file formats, including point clouds and PTSs. So now that you you bring that in and you turn on that point cloud and see how it aligns with the pixels that are representing the car's location for that frame. Uh, if you're off a little bit, then we go back into Cloud Compare, iterate, move it around, and then bring it back into Photo Modeler until things align really well. Um, so Ben organized this project and he did a really good job. You can see he's got the point cloud uh, in PTS format for every frame that he analyzed um, for that full length tutorial. And here he's got 421 and we can see this photo is called 421. So this is frame 421 and this is the point cloud that should align with that. So if we turn that point cloud on, and then um, let's just mess with the opacity. And you can see as we turn that point cloud opacity up, we can see that it aligns really well with the pixels for that vehicle during that, uh, uh, for that frame. So now we know where that car was during that frame. And if we have a subsequent frame uh, that's, you know, say half a second later or so, and we can perform that same analysis again that we'll know where the vehicle was a half a second later and then you can of course calculate the speed based on those two positions. A lot of the times we'll also uh, export those positions and then bring them into Virtual Crash or some other simulation suite and then make sure that at each time that we know that the frame was written at those times the vehicle in the simulation is right on top of those point clouds um, and that that helps you solidify what the dynamics are. So one one more trick uh, that really helps this process. I learned this from Photo Modeler a couple years back. If you go to Properties of Selected Photos and then go to uh, Image File Name and click there, and then you can just click Replace Photo and Retain Orientation. So when you do that, um, then you can select, so we had 481 was another frame, we'll just click 481. Now everything stays the same, all the mathematics stay the same, but now the blue sedan's in a, a different location. So this is 481 and let's just take a peek at Ben's fit on 481. Turn on 481 point cloud and turn up the opacity. And you can see that it fits really well from there. So that saves a lot of time uh, and headache uh, w when you're analyzing a, a surveillance uh, video from a, a stationary camera. Um, you could just replace the images and retain all of the, the hard work you did uh, when you're selecting control points and accounting for distortion and whatnot. Uh, so a really cool process makes for, for great exhibits uh, when, when you're presenting this to a jury to see their response to it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, or a client for that matter. Um, they they kind of understand uh, where, where your time went and they understand what the 
what the process is, even if they don't understand the underlying mathematics, which, which few people do. But if you can just show them what you're doing with a point cloud, how you're getting things to align with the pixels from the surveillance video, um, I, I think it goes a long way towards gaining their, their uh, um, trust in for them to think that you're a credible uh, analyst. Uh, and it, it just gives them something fun to look at too at, at, test, at trial, which uh, sometimes is just half the battle keeping their attention. So uh, anyway, that's the process. Like I said, Ben will have, uh, I think it's going to be about an hour, an hour and a half long tutorial detailing all the specifics of it and how he goes about it. Um, and uh, hopefully that uh, gets you everything you need. But if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to shoot us an email or give us a call. Thanks.